OpenAI has silently released a new text to 3D model, a 3D generation model that is currently available from OpenAI, completely open source. It's called Shape E. It's called Shape E. Um, it's in the family of, you know, like you can say DALI, Point E. OpenAI already had a model called Point E and which we have covered in the channel before. So if you want point cloud generation, you can refer that video. But now we have got a new model called Shapey. So how is Shapey different from the existing model is what the first question that came to my mind and the paper very clearly presents that. So we present Shape E, a conditional generative model for 3D assets. Unlike a recent work on 3D generative models, which produces a single output representation, Shape E directly generates the parameters of implicit functions that can be rendered as both textual meshes and neural radiance field. If you are not familiar with neural radiance field, you might know this word called NERF, N-E-R-F. It's been taking the entire internet by storm where people are making drone shots without having a drone. So you can just create a neural radiance field and then set the camera in the way you want. And then you can make the video look like it's a drone shot, even though if you have got not got a drone or a robotic camera. So what Shape E can do is Shape E can generate both texture, textured meshes, which you can import in tools like a blender and other tools and then create 3D objects. And also you can make NERF, neural radiance field. And this is quite interesting. And when you compare it with point E, which is also from OpenAI, an explicit 3D generative model over point clouds, Shape E converges faster and reaches comparable or better quality despite modeling a high dimensional multi representation output space, which means if you are planning to use point E or if you are obsessed with point E, this is something that you should definitely check out. Thanks to OpenAI for making this open source. Now getting into the model in itself, you can see certain samples. Uh, so a chair that looks like an avocado, an airplane that looks like a banana, a spaceship, a birthday cupcake, a chair that looks like a tree, a green boot, a penguin, ube ice cream cone, a bowl of vegetables. So these are some of the examples that they've given you. And you can see how just a simple text prompt, all you have to give is a simple text prompt and that generates the 3D object that you can see here. And you can see these are 3D objects, like right now it's just a GIF, an animation, but you can export that 3D object. It's very simple to use. It's not just text to 3D, it can also do image to 3D, but that is not something that we are going to see in hands-on video today. We're going to jump into the Google Collab notebook that I've prepared for you, thanks to the example notebooks that OpenAI has given. It's not completely created by me, but I've made it a Google Collab notebook for to make it easier for you to run this. All you have to do is open this Google Collab notebook, which I'll link it in the YouTube description below the like button, click that, run all and you should be able to see the 3d images and i'll let you know where you need to change what which will help you create slightly different pictures to start with first thing that we need to do is we need to clone the shape e repository and once we have cloned the shape e repository we need to enter into the shape e repository shape e repository is nothing but this this google um, github repository which uh, has got mit license from OpenAI that says generate 3D objects conditioned on text or images. And once you have entered into the shape E repository, then you have to install everything. At this point, you're good to go. Now, all you have to do is import all the required items from import torch, and that's quite important. And then import all the required things from the shape E repository, like from shape E diffusion sample, you import sample latents, you, you know, you want to create pan cameras, you want to create widget, all these things are available here. Once that is there, then you need to set up the device. Uh, if you have got a GPU like me in the Google Collab, I'm using the free GPU, then it, it would be set as CUDA. If you do not have GPU, it would you know assign the device as CPU. So that is something that you set in this line. Then you're going to load the required models. Then you're going to load the transmitter model and the main text 300 mil, uh, million parameter model. And then you're going to open the diffusion. Now this is the place where you're going to give the settings the batch size, how many images you want, the guidance scale, which is very important for you to set how much you know you want to change the image or the creativity from the prompt in itself. A prompt, a birthday cake. So I've just given a birthday cake and all these things go here and then the latents are getting created. And you can play around with this parameter. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the details of this parameter, but you can always go to the GitHub repository and then understand what these are. It took me about, um, about one minute for this particular configuration. 
batch size 4, guidance scale 15 and for these default settings that I got from OpenAI library, the GitHub page say it took about 1 minute in a Google Collab notebook. And next, once you have created the latents, now you can export or you can render this latents into two format. One, you can render it as STF, the mesh that we discussed about, or you can render them as NERF, the neural radiance field. And you need to give the size, the, the size as you increase the size of the render, it's going to take a longer time. So like typically like any video editing or any rendering software, the the number of the size that you increase or like the number of frames, the we, the rendering time is going to take time. So depending upon the machine that you have got, make sure that you change this value. I went ahead with the 64 and I got all these renders in 36 seconds. You can see I've got one, two, three, four. I've got four renders of birthday cake. The next thing is, um, as uh, most people who work in 3D, your life is not going to be only inside Google Collab Notebook. So it is important for you to export this mesh or whatever that you have created the latents into a, some kind of file format that you can import into a 3D software like Blender. And one of the most popular format is .ply that stands for point cloud. So you can export this as point cloud and once you do that, it's going to export everything as point cloud 0, 1, 2, 3. So the four images that you created or the four 3D objects that you created can be exported into point cloud and those have been exported as point cloud and I'm going to just quickly show you how it looks when you import it inside Blender. I, this is a very basic import. I've not done anything very, you know, I've not even added colors. I've not did anything. All you have to do is go to the file, go to import and select PLY and then all you have to do is import the object after you have downloaded the object from Google Collab Notebook. So if you do not know how to download it from Google Collab Notebook, it's very simple. Go here right click this or click that three dots and then click download that will download the PLY point cloud object and go to blender and then from blender you have to just import it and then there are certain ways how you should import it if you want the colors like vertex colors but I just want to show you that the 3D thing actually works like you can see the 3D entire 3D objects if you want to if you don't want colors if you want to just give your own colors you can do it with blender I'm not a blender expert but I just wanted to show you that this can be ultimately exported or imported into Blender. So overall, this is an amazing piece of technology. Imagine you have to create 3D game assets. Uh, there are a lot of websites where people actually go buy 3D assets like potion, you know, simple characters and a lot of things. And looks like, you know, this is quite amazing to conclude this demo. I would like to quickly show you something like in real time so that we all know uh, how this works. I want to actually, you know, let's create a sword. Um, it's a very simple prompt, a sword, and uh, I, I'm going to go with batch size one. I don't want like three objects. I want it to be faster. So I've gone ahead with the same guidance skill, batch size one, guidance skill 15, and the prompt as a sword. And you can see how much time it takes in real time. This I'm not going to edit this particular piece here. And uh, you can also see certain um, you know parameters here, like for example, the progress equals true will help you enable the progress bar so that you know how much time it takes. After this is successfully done, the next thing is we are going to render it, which which would ideally take like half of the amount that this has taken. And you can see the latents are created. Um, once you have the latents created, all you have to do is you have to render it, render it in some kind of format. And here we are rendering it in the nerf format, which should take to 30 to 60 seconds. I'm going to probably edit this part so that you don't wait for it. Oh, it's done. Cool. It's already done in uh, 10 seconds. You have the sort. So this is how you generate a 3D object using artificial intelligence, just simply using a text prompt. We have not seen the tutorial of image to 3D, which is also possible using the same shape E library. You can probably use my notebook and the notebook that they have given us part of the example and then use image to 3D. But even simply, if you want text to 3D, this is an amazing model. It's quite, quite an interesting model, uh, an interesting entry into the 3D generation space which helps you create 3D mesh and uh, nerf as well from the latents in itself. A uh, near plane that looks like a banana. So you can also, you know, explore the creativity that you have been doing with stable diffusion and DALI. You don't have to necessarily generate only real world objects, right? Um, you can also do things like that do not exist, like an avocado that looks like a chair or an airplane that looks like a banana. Um, and it's, it's, it's really amazing what we can do with this thing. I would like to hear from you. What do you feel about this 3D model? A lot of text generation models have been coming 
but I didn't want to lose attention of this amazing 3D model that comes from open source, uh, open AI as an open source model. Um, it, it looks like they have been living up to their name as an open source company or pro open source company with these kind of releases. Let me know in the comment section what do you feel. Otherwise, all the links will be in the YouTube description for you to get started immediately right after this video. See you in another video. Happy prompting.